Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you, Lenny, for a great start to a Tuesday morning. You know, we are nine, yeah, nine days away. Now we're in single digits, but we feel a little more real, you know. It's certainly imminent. And so this morning, we're going to go around the league Listening to Lenny talk about the Cardinals bullpen, I, I just got to run with that one for a minute. You know, that bullpen is really going to be a work in progress. That's the best word I know for it. And of course, Car- Carlos Martinez, I agree, probably by default, although that's not who the leading candidate, the, as I'm reading this morning, but to me, he's the most reliable candidate. He wants to go back in the rotation. I don't know. I mean, but, you know, the thing going on in St. Louis, guys, could be going on in other places. Uh, you take, for example, except for depth. I mean, you got proven depth in other teams. And, and I'm going to talk about one right now. Yesterday, let's go around the league. Let's start in the American League, and let's talk about the Rays. So, Diego Castillo, a really big part of the Ray's bullpen, and you know the talk is they're not naming a closer, not a set closer. They're going to rotate that position, so they say. So Diego, back at camp yesterday, had to take care of things with his family, is what he said. Uh, But they were here, his family, he's back. And despite being away for a couple of days, he thinks he'll be ready for opening day, plans to throw a bullpen session on Tuesday, live batting practice some point this week. And Kevin Cash said he is not, not worried about the right-hander being away from camp and said, quote, Diego has been with us the entire six weeks leading up and throwing bullpens. And I think he even had a live BP at one time, so he'll be totally fine, end of quote. Now, Castillo's back in the mix. If you're in a league, fantasy league, where you're in a saves, hold league, then this Tampa bullpen is a great bullpen to have players on your squad, no doubt. Now, I know they'll be pitching in the already rough and tough American League East and now pitching against the already rough and tough National League East as well. But you'll have Castillo back in the mix. But look, I'm still concerned about a few players on their team, and i got to tell you who they are. First of all, I'm concerned, really concerned about Tyler Glass now, who has not yet appeared at Ray's camp. So how many of you guys out there listening in the chat room or on podcast have Tyler Glass now on your roster and drafted him fairly early thinking, hey, I'm going to get from Glass now what he gave me the first two months of 2019. Well, I don't see it happening. I mean, first of all, you got to get some work in. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I did a little more research on it. You got to get some work in. He's not been in camp at all. So, you know, we're talking about starting in nine days. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not big on glass now, right now. Big Al on the prowl is loving his pickup of. Zach Britton. I picked him up in a league. I think Zach Britton is a great pickup, particularly due to the fact that we're looking at a nine-week or seven-week regular season with a two-week playoff. And if you have Zach Britton for two weeks as your closer, let's say, well, you're looking at over 25% of your um, le- of your season. You know, with Britton as your closer, pitching for the Yankees where he's going to pick up tons of saves, in my opinion, over those two weeks relative to the league. I want to go back to the Rays, though. Also not in camp, Randy Arizarina, Yanni Chirinos, and Jose Martinez, not in camp. Austin Meadows has not been seen on the field since participating in the first workout on July 3rd, and Brendan McKay has not been seen on the mound for more than a week. These are big names, guys, and let's start. We've talked about Glass now. Let's talk about Austin Meadows. How many of you guys have dropped or not dropped, drafted, get my verbs correct this morning. How many of you guys drafted Austin Meadows and targeted him in the top 30 of your draft? Probably a lot of us. And thank you, Big Al on the Prowl. Good job for you too. Way to pick up uh, Zach Britton. 
I'm, th- I'm thinking that if you are drafting and did not draft Austin Meadows in your top 30, you, you didn't do your homework. Well, now maybe you did because he hasn't been taking those swings since July 3rd. It's what? July 14th. He's gone more than 10 days without taking part in team workouts. And if I'm an Austin Meadows owner, I have got to be more than concerned. Not just the fact that we haven't seen him practicing or working out, but there's really been no report on him either. Is it COVID? I don't know. Is he symptomatic? I don't know. But I do know he's not working out at camp. So these are big names for Tampa. And as we know, this is a year, 2020, where you've got to start out quick. You know, I look at the Yankees last year. You know, you know I'm a Yankees fan, so let's pull them into this because you know I'm going to do it. After 50 games last year, the Yankees were 38-12. and 12. Well, Pretty doggone good. But to start the year, the first 15 games, they were 6-9. and 6-9 and nine this year is not the way you want to begin your season. And without Glass now, and without Yanni Chernas, who's a big arm in that rotation and bullpen, without Jose Martinez, who is the trade chip they acquired from the Cardinals in the offseason, looking to have Jose Martinez as probably more of an almost full-time designated hitter, playing some first base, playing some outfield. Now without Austin Meadows, look, you have taken away some major offensive production as well as major pitching production for the Tampa Bay Rays. And, you know, you've got Blake Snell, who's coming off elbow surgery. We hope the best, but we just don't know. I'm just saying, this may not be a year in which Tampa plays up to expectations. Now, yesterday, Snell and Charlie Morton both pitched outside in another location. They did not participate in a simulated game. Kevin Cash attended their workout, was encouraged from what he saw. Morton pitched five innings yesterday. Snell tossed three. So he called it, I'm quoting him, very productive. He called it definitely the work that Blake and Charlie put in. It was very beneficial. They have got to have production from those two players as I see it going forward. So I've spent seven minutes of my show talking about the Rays. Ha, can't talk about every team like that today now, can I? It may be a view of the American League today and a view of the National League on Thursday. I want to look up some notes on the, or share you with you my notes, on the Toronto Blue Jays. And how many of you guys are thinking like me, hey, If Tampa is not as good as we think, and that's my prediction, then Toronto may be better than expected. And that, too, is my prediction. Hinjin Ryu needs to be an ace. And in the intra-squad game on Monday, Ryu threw five innings of one-run ball, allowing four hits and striking out four. He threw 59 pitches, 40 for strikes, He then went to the bullpen and threw 10 more pitches, which got him to his planned count of 70. He said after the outing, quoting, I felt good on the mound. I was able to raise my pitch count and my innings as I wanted, and the progress has been fine. I think I'll be ready for opening day, end of quote. Ryu used all of his pitches, and look, he's caught the eye not only of Blue Jay management, but also of other Blue Jay pitchers. How about that? Uh, Pete Walker, player on the team, said the guys love him. He's used his experience with the older, younger guys. I mean, Ryu, a winner in Los Angeles. I think he'll be a winner in Toronto. I was down on him a few weeks ago, and my good friend Phil Chaplin said, but Arn, he's healthy. Okay, and that's the whole key with Ryu over his career. When Hinjin has been healthy, Hinjin has produced great results. And he's had a problem over the course of his career staying on the field and off of the disabled list. So now we'll see, going into this season with the Blue Jays, will he be able to stay healthy? 
He's got his fastball command, his cutter. We'll see. Austin Martin, the club's number five overall pick in the draft, stepped onto the field yesterday wearing number 70. I don't think he'll keep that one very long. After the inter-squad game, he took ground balls at third. He's 21 years old. Not going to be probably much of a factor this year, but going forward, I think, could be one of the best all-around players in this year's draft. So, let's also look at this one. Lourdes Guriel Jr. Remember, Lourdes, a lot expected out of him this year. Just started playing yesterday. He was in Dundee, and he went through workouts in Dundee yesterday with team officials. Everything seemed to go well. How about Bo Bichette taking Tanner Rourke deep in the opposite field in his first at bat yesterday? I think Bo Bichette will be an MVP candidate this year. That's right. I think Bo Bichette will be an MVP candidate. I put him in the top 15 in MVP voting for 2020. Now, do you do the same? I don't know. That's two looks at teams in the, I got to go to it. Okay, I got to go to it. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Yankees. Yankees. Let's look at some Yankee notes. Got to do it. David Garcia working out at the stadium yesterday. Looking good. I tell you what, I am really liking these Yankee young pitchers. I talked about Michael King. I got to talk about Michael King. Michael King throws across his body, tall right-hander. I think he will be a big plus in that Yankee bullpen going forward. I really do. I think Michael King will be a big benefit in the bullpen for the Yankees. Now, yesterday I talked about other pitchers. King, to me, is that reliever. You know, they, they've got Chapman out. I think he could fill in a hole. If you haven't seen him pitch, take a look at him. You're going to like him. Aaron Judge took swings yesterday. Stiff neck. It's always something with Judge, isn't it? You know, he's battling this injury, this broken rib. Now it's a stiff neck. He took swings in the indoor batting cage on Monday afternoon. Did not appear on the field for, three, for his third consecutive day. There's an intra-squad game today. Not sure if he's going to play in that. So we'll keep our eye out. Now, because I know Jack Youngblood is listening and he's in the chat room, I've got to talk a little bit about Adley Rushman, who took BP, as I understand it, yesterday at Camden Yards, and maybe Jack was there to watch. But as I understand it, Rushman is doing nothing but impressing the Orioles' management and ownership. Also, Ryan Mountcastle. These are fan- this is a fantasy name for 2020, Ryan Mountcastle. Okay? Mountcastle, Brandon Hyde's estimate of Mountcastle is, quote, I think he's close. I think he still needs some reps defensively. We've moved him around quite a bit. He's put the work in out there and done a nice job. I think he's close, end of quote. What does that mean for Mountcastle? Probably will begin the year in secondary camp, but don't be surprised if Mountcastle is brought up to play sometime soon, and we will keep our eye on Mountcastle as the season progresses. Now, we know opening day, the Orioles have named their starter, it's, you know, the Orioles with John Means starting opening day and now the Yasiel Puig talk that we discussed yesterday, the Orioles are not going to contend this year, but I see them advancing their young players, the Adley Rushmans, the Mount Castles, Means who's going to start opening day. They're building on a nucleus to help with the future. So there you go. That's my Orioles cap for today. What about notes with the White Sox? Let's take a look at them. Lucas Giolito went four innings Monday in an intra-squad game. He had a 27-pitch first inning, but then settled down from that 
and looked pretty good. He was happy with his performance. He worked on his breaking pitches, throwing his curveball more than